Alrighty y'all, welcome to the workshop. This is the first video from Redbeard Engineered. And this is a channel that I just started in order to showcase some projects that don't fit into the Redbeard Ops genre, which is more so knife making and metal fabrication. This channel's first project is going to be kind of techy. It's gonna be a Bitcoin node. And you can think of a Bitcoin node as the guy walking around validating that the puzzles have been solved correctly and that the participant, the miner, has followed all the rules. For this reason, a Bitcoin node takes up much less computing power than a Bitcoin miner, and we can build a Bitcoin node with a Raspberry Pi. With all that being said, the goal of today's video is to build that Bitcoin node and get it all set up on the computer. This will allow us to have our own copy of the Bitcoin blockchain and do our part at securing the network. With that, let's get started. I'll be listing out all the items I used in this build as well as linking to them in the description below. The Raspberry Pi 4s with 8GB of RAM have been pretty hard to find recently, but I was able to find a kit on Amazon that not only had the 8GB model, but also most everything else you need to build a full node. Note that it seems like this item goes in and out of stock, so keep an eye on it and make sure that you're getting the 8GB model. The items included in this kit are a Raspberry Pi, a power cable and switch, heat sinks and a fan, a case, a 128 gigabyte micro SD card, a USB micro SD card reader, and some HDMI cables you don't really need. You'll also need a solid state hard drive and a case to basically convert that hard drive into an external drive. The current Bitcoin blockchain size is under 500 gigabytes. However, I'd advise getting your hands on a two terabyte drive just to future proof your node and allow you to download some of the other applications that come with the software. The Canna kit comes with three heat sinks that have a peel and stick thermal paste on them. They are designed to cover the central processing unit, the USB and ethernet controller, and the RAM. Once you have your heat sinks installed, it's time to get your Raspberry Pi into the provided case. I found this case pretty simple to use, but if you're looking for an upgrade, there are numerous cases online for the Raspberry Pi. With the case hooked up, we're going to install the fan that came with the kit. In general, with computer fans, the airflow goes towards the grill and the open fan side is the suction side of the fan. I actually installed this fan backwards in the footage and it was acting as an exhaust fan. I went back and reinstalled this fan to blow onto the computer itself and saw a significant reduction in the CPU temperature. There are two pins on the board that operate the fan and I made sure to zoom in with a picture here so you can see which ones they are. Now that the case is all put together, the next step is to simply take our two terabyte SSD and insert it into the USB hard drive enclosure. The USB SSD will plug into one of the Raspberry Pi's USB ports. The power cable will plug into the side. And eventually the only other thing we will need to plug in is the ethernet cable to connect your machine to the internet. Before we start up our node, we need to first install the Umbral operating system onto our micro SD card. To do this, we will need to take our micro SD card insert it into our USB card reader and plug it into our computer. The goal here is to flash the Umbro operating system onto our micro SD card so that when we insert it into our node and start it up, the node will recognize that card and start running Umbro. Just to make sure we're good to go with flashing Umbro onto our SD card, I went and formatted that card in my computer. There are then two items that you will need to download from Umbro's site. One of them is the Umbral operating system image file, and the other one is the Belina Etcher. The Belina Etcher is a program that will flash this image file onto your micro SD card. I will put a link to Umbral's site, which has both of these items for download in the description below. As y'all just saw, flashing the image file with Belina Etcher is super easy. All you have to do is drag that image file into the Etcher, and it will ask you what hard drive you wanna flash it to, Make sure that you select your 128 gigabyte SD card and then flash Umbro. Flashing the operating system will take a few minutes, but once it's complete, you have everything you need to start up your node. Start off by plugging in your hard drive via the USB cable on the back of the Raspberry Pi, plug in an ethernet cable for the internet, and then you can insert your micro SD card on the bottom of the Raspberry Pi. Then the last thing you need to do is to plug in your power and turn the node on. After your node has been running for a few minutes, Go ahead and open up your browser and type in umbrel.local to connect to your node. The Umbrel operating system will then walk you through a setup process, which includes creating a username and password. 
You will use this password every time you connect to your node. Once your username and password have been created, Umbra will provide you with a 24 word seed phrase. You want to store this seed phrase in a safe place because anyone with this seed phrase can input it into a wallet and steal the funds on your node. After we have the seed phrase, the last thing that you will get is an onion address. What this address allows you to do is to access your node remotely from a Tor browser. After you get through all the setup, the only thing left to do is to sit back and relax and wait for your Umbral node to download the Bitcoin blockchain. Since the Bitcoin blockchain is around 400 gigs of data, it's really gonna depend on what your internet connection speed is to know how long it will take you to download. In my case, I had a 600 megabit per second internet plan and it took me around 81 hours. Now there are a ton of additional applications in the Umbral app store to play with and frankly, a dizzying number of cool things you can do with your new node. But those features really aren't the major focus of this video. Goal number one was to set up a full Bitcoin node and we've completed that mission. The second goal of this video is to set up a Lightning node. In a nutshell, the Lightning network is a second layer protocol built on top of Bitcoin that allows users to transact quickly and cheaply off the main Bitcoin blockchain, but still in a secure manner. Applications like Strike utilize the Lightning network to send money around the world cheaply and with darn near instant settlement. To start a Lightning node, you're going to need to open a channel. This will require you to have some Bitcoin inside of your Umbrella Bitcoin wallet. So make sure to fund that before trying to open a channel. The general rule of thumb on channel size is between 600,000 and 1 million Satoshis. And one Satoshi is 100 millionth of a Bitcoin. Once you have the funds in the Bitcoin account, opening a Lightning channel is very easy. First thing you need to do is go find someone you would like to open a channel with. You can go to a blockchain explorer for Lightning and find some of the largest channels or the most connected channels and just copy and paste their public Lightning network address into your open channel box. Then all that's left is selecting the size of your channel and Satoshis and picking a fee that you feel comfortable paying. You can pick a very low fee and just be willing to wait for a while for this channel to really open. Once you do that, you'll see that the channel is opening and once the transaction goes through on the main layer one blockchain of Bitcoin, you'll have an open channel with whoever you chose. By opening a channel with someone else like we just did, this allows your lightning node to send Satoshis. However, someone will have to open a channel with you in order to have any inbound liquidity into your lightning node. So what y'all just saw me doing here is creating a lightning network invoice so that I can send myself some Satoshis through my own Lightning Network node just to verify everything's working well. And everything went through without a hitch. So like I mentioned earlier, there's a ton more to do with your new node and this video is really just scratching the surface. That being said, we have accomplished our goals of building and setting up both a Bitcoin and Lightning Network node. I hope you all found this content helpful and if you did, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. With that, this is Redbeard Engineered, signing off.